Yeah, so what attracts me to, to research, I think, is that it's exciting, is that every day there's something new going on in the lab. There's, uh, you're always learning something new. There's a lot of freedom. Uh, you have the opportunity to ask a lot of interesting questions, to come up with creative ways of answering the questions. And then, personally, I just like working with my hands. I think um, having a, a craft where you actually can be good at something that requires dexterity or, or just, uh, you know, sort of getting used to doing a skill uh, is really kind of appealing, even though a lot of what we do is very cerebral, is very, it involves a lot of thinking. In the end, it comes down to what you can do with your hands. Um, and I think immunology is interesting because uh, I've always had a fascination with what does the body do when something goes wrong. So in this case, you know, what I'm studying is when we uh, infect uh, a model system, C. elegans, uh, with a pathogen, how does it respond to that? Uh, what, what alarm bells go off and how, does, how do cells uh, actually combat damage that's caused by infection? My name is Matt Youngman and I work at uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and I'm interested in immunosenescence, so it's the decline in immune function during aging. So the, really the question we're trying to get at is why is it that older people get sick from infection faster? And so since we want to study something that's kind of at the end of life, uh, it was important to be in a system uh, that has a pretty uh, short lifespan. And so that's why we chose this little tiny roundworm called C. elegans, or just worms for short. So they're actually so tiny that they look like a sort of a comma, printed comma on a page. So they're very, very small. And the, uh, the benefit there is they only live for about three weeks. So we can look at a very, very old worm when it's only 12 or 15 days old. My focus is really on a very well-conserved signaling pathway, the insulin signaling pathway, that obviously also acts in humans as well. And the, the primary uh, protein that I'm working on in worms is called DAF16, but it has a, a counterpart in humans that turns out to be a tumor suppressor. And so what I'm interested in is in worms figuring out how does this protein act in protecting the worm from infection later in life. And so why this is important is because in humans, um, this protein, the counterpart, is a tumor suppressor, as I said. And so figuring out how a tumor suppressor is regulated, we might be able to find a way of modulating the activity of that protein and actually protecting people from cancer later on in life. So we could, in the very long run, um, be identifying uh, candidates uh, for, for drug targets, and that's, that's very exciting. In high school, I had a really talented biology teacher, and I got interested in genetics and DNA. And from there I went on to college to study biology and got my PhD and so now I'm doing postdoctoral work uh, in worms. You can look at the progression of a scientist almost as growing up from, from a child maybe in, in, in college when you're a college student you're kind of young. When you get to graduate school you're kind of in your adolescent phase of your career, a little bit more autonomy. When you get to be a postdoc now you're sort of becoming an adult and you're getting more um, sort of responsibility. It's a lot more like being a professor and so the demands though are still uh, you have to balance that. So, so some of it is mentoring younger students, mentoring uh, technicians, mentoring maybe a graduate student, but then also you're still doing experiments. You're still in the lab yourself working with your hands. So it's, it's challenging but also very exciting to kind of play that role, to be in this transition phase to where you're, you're learning to be a, uh, on your own, to be independent, to act more like a professor. At the same time, you still have the responsibility to go get the data yourself. Uh, I took the CRI fellowship, I think, because I think it's fascinating. Uh, the approach that CRI is uh, really, th what they're funding is, is uh, a very novel way of attacking cancer, of using the body's own immune system um, to attack cancer. So I think being part of that uh, is, is really very exciting. Um, I'm not sure that there's other um, institutes like CRI out there that are funding such, such focused uh, research. Um, and then, you know, I knew it to be a very good charity. I know that they have a great reputation um, for really using most of, of the money that they get to, to go to research. And so uh, I think it's great to be affiliated with, a, with something like that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously as a fellow, we're, we're treated very well. And uh, compared to, to some other fellowships that are out there, I know the CRI is very, very generous. And so it was, it was really great to be a part of, of all that.